Hello, my name is Will Lawrence and welcome to A Beginner's Guide to Watercolour, a series of short tutorials covering everything you need to start painting in watercolour. I am a painter, illustrator and teacher with many years experience in enabling students to achieve considerable success. By following these tutorials, hopefully you will gain a greater understanding of watercolour, how it works and how to use it. Watercolour, or specifically transparent watercolour, is a simple medium found all over the world. Watercolour paint is made by binding pigment in a water-soluble glue, usually gum arabic. This is then diluted with water and thinly applied to paper or other surface, usually with brushes or other tools. Drawing is often used as a guide for placing the paint which is put down as marks, textures and washes, which are areas of colour. Paint is sometimes applied as a single layer or more frequently multiple layers to achieve the required tonal and colour values. Today I am going to introduce you to laying washes. In watercolour, the term wash describes an area of paint which has usually been defined by drawing in pencil or similar medium. Washes are a basic building block of watercolour and most watercolour paintings use them. Watercolour paintings can be made entirely from washes, but frequently they are combined with marks and textures. Washes are sometimes used as a single layer often with a strong drawing medium like pen and ink. More often, they are used in multiple layers. A watercolour wash is usually fairly complete, although it may have a texture or gaps. Washes can be divided into several different types. Flat washes, which are constant in both tone and colour, washes which change tonally and washes in which the colour changes. Sometimes a multicoloured wash where colour is added to a wet area is added to this group. As this is a demonstration I will not stretch the paper, a process where the paper is wetted and fixed to a board. If the paper has a right and a wrong side, make sure that this is the right way up. Largely, this will be only mould made and handmade papers. If there is a watermark, then the right side of the paper is the side from which the watermark can be seen correctly. If the paper has been cut down or is in a pad, then you will have to judge this from the paper surface. The right side is usually the more textured side. This texture is often more natural looking and has a positive aspect. Conversely, the reverse side will look less textured, have a more mechanical feel and appear somewhat indented. If you can see no difference, then the sides are usually equally usable. Most student papers can be used on both sides. I will now draw some squares with an HB pencil to contain the washes. Some artists work on the flat I am working on a drawing board lifted to a slight slope, although this will need to be put flat when the washes are complete. I will need to choose the most suitable brush. If you are painting a large area, such as a sky, a large mop or similar wash brush may be appropriate. If this is a smaller, more precise area, a standard large round brush may be best. Always use the biggest brush that will allow you to paint with accuracy and speed. I will start with a flat wash. 
I will need to decide whether to wet the paper first. Wetting will make the wash more even and produce a better texture. This will also give me more time to complete the wash and maybe make corrections. You should work on dry paper if you wish to include textures or white areas. Next, I shall mix the paint, ensuring that I have made enough to cover the entire area. If you run out during this process, the paint may dry while you are mixing more, leaving a hard edge. One strategy is to start with an estimated amount of water and then gradually strengthen this, adding more paint until the desired strength is achieved. Some painters use an old brush for colour mixing. I now wet the paper in the same fashion as I will apply the paint. Starting on the top edge, I work methodically across the paper, reloading the brush as necessary. Don't overload the brush. The aim is to evenly wet the surface. It should now be quite shiny. A lamp? in a low position may help you to see this. If this is a big area, you may wish to let this first layer soak in and then reapply the water. However, at this size, one layer is fine. Now I shall apply the wash. Starting at the top edge, I systematically apply the paint working side to side covering the paper without leaving gaps. I will reload the brush as needed, trying to keep the brush loading consistent. There is now a small window in which you might be able to tidy up the wash. However, I will now leave the wash, lowering the work surface so that it is flat. Now, I will layer wash that changes tonally. First, I mix up sufficient colour for the required final tonal value. Again, working on the slope, I evenly wet the paper. I start at the elevated end of the area, initially laying down just water. As I work carefully across this area, I gradually add the paint so that the wash becomes increasingly darker until it achieves the final tonal value.
I then lower the board to preserve the wash. Now I will lay a wash that changes colour. This works better if the colours you choose are sympathetic to each other. For example, red and yellow, yellow and blue, or blue and red. I will use yellow and blue. I mix up two washes, one for each colour. As before, working on the slope, I evenly wet the paper. I start with the lightest of the two colours. Working carefully across this area, I gradually add the other colour so that the wash gradually changes colour until the target colour is achieved. Again, the board and paper are lowered. Now, I will lay a multicoloured wash. This wash is not put down in the same way as the previous washes. It may be better to paint this horizontally. I mix a variety of colours to the desired strength. I wet the paper as before, although this could be slightly wetter. I apply the colour in small patches, letting the areas spread until they form a continuous area of variegated colour. Again, the board and paper are lowered. These washes provide the essential basis for watercolour. 
it is certainly worth practicing these until you feel fairly confident. Practice will help you mix enough colour, choose the best brush and experiment with wetting the paper. You could also try merging a variety of colours. So have fun painting and see you next time. Further videos will deal with using washes in context for both landscape and still life.